All right, we will now solve our very first linear system by Gaussian elimination. We're now armed with three row operations that don't change any of the relationships among the columns and therefore don't change the particular solution or the null space. In other words, they preserve the solution set of the system. So let's use those operations to our advantage and try to eliminate as many entries of this matrix as possible. In other words, turn them into zeros so that the relationships among the columns that may not be apparent right now, of course we know what they are, but we'll pretend that we don't, uh, become apparent. So once again, we already know that the middle column is the average of the other two, but let's pretend for as long as we possibly can that we're not noticing that or that the right-hand side is the sum of the first two columns. So let's begin to make this matrix as simple as possible, in other words, to introduce as many zeros into it as possible, and then try to catch the moment when we can't help but notice these relationships. And, though, and that is usually the right place to stop Gaussian elimination. When all of the relationships that you're after become apparent, that's typically in manual exercises, the right place to stop unless you're specifically asked to go to the very end. All right, what will be our first row operation? Well, let's try to eliminate this four. Use one, and we will always try to use the topmost leftmost number to do all of the eliminating. So we'll use one to eliminate the four and the seven below it. So one is called a pivot. And we always use pivots to eliminate all other entries in the matrix that are below and above the pivot. Of course, there's nothing above this pivot, so we'll only worry about the four and the seven. So in order to eliminate the four, we have no choice but to subtract four of the first column from the second, excuse me, subtract four of the first row from the second. So when we subtract four of the first row from the second, we'll have zero in this entry, five minus eight minus three in this entry, six minus 12, so minus six in this entry, and nine minus 12 minus three in this entry. Always remember to do on the right-hand side what you're doing to the matrix. So four will become zero, that's the whole point. We won't write zero, blanks, means zero. Minus five, as we said, becomes minus three. Six becomes minus six. And nine becomes minus three. Nine minus 12 minus three. And the first step of Gaussian elimination is done. Now you can still make sure that the middle column is the average of the other two. So the only entry to check is this one. And yes, minus three is still the average of zero and negative six. So Gauss elimination is working as prescribed. And the column on the right hand side is still the sum of the first two columns of the matrix. So everything works as prescribed. But now, is it a little easier to see that the middle column is the average of the other two? Because remember, we're pretending throughout this exercise, well, we're doing two things simultaneously. Number one, we recognize that the middle column is the average of the other two and make sure that that relationship is preserved by all of the row operations of Gaussian elimination. Of course, we know that it is, but we're just making sure. And on the other plane, we pretend that we don't see that relationship and trying to catch the moment when Gaussian elimination will reveal that relationship to us. At some point, the matrix will be so simple that you won't be able to help but notice that the middle column is the average of the other two, or that two of the middle column is the sum of the first and third columns. So that moment is not upon us yet. So let's continue with Gaussian elimination. Let's now go after the seven. One is our pivot. So in order to eliminate the seven, take a moment to think about what the row operation is. And it is to subtract seven of the first row from the third row and that would put zero here, eight minus 14 minus six here, nine minus 21 minus 12 here, 
and 15 minus 21 minus 6 here. So keep those numbers in mind as I'm doing the erasing. So 7 is gone, replaced with 0. 8 becomes minus 6. 9 becomes 9 minus 21 minus 12. And 15 becomes 15 minus 21, negative 6. Negative 6. And we're done with our second step of galaxy elimination. All right, let's do some more eliminating. Now, let's choose another pivot because this pivot is done. Everything below it is eliminated and everything above, well, there's nothing above it. So what will be our next pivot? And remember, the convention is to always choose, to always choose the leftmost, topmost entry. Now you may think for a moment that it might be this two, but we cannot use this two as a pivot because if we start using this two as a pivot, for instance, to eliminate this three, minus three, then this one will pollute what we've already achieved, will undo the elimination attained in the previous step. So actually, we won't use any of the other numbers in the first row as pivots. The first row is done. We have found its pivot and no other element can act as a pivot because otherwise this pivot will start undoing the elimination. So we will use this negative three as our next pivot. And in fact, it becomes a convention that pivots always come in consecutive rows. The first pivot will always be in row one, the second pivot will always be in row two, and so forth. Now you will also learn that the columns that pivots come in is not up to you. It's already predetermined by the matrix and the relationships among the columns within the matrix. Okay, so negative three will be our next pivot. And as you can tell, it's much easier to work with pivots when they're equal one. So we'll use another row operation to make this pivot equal one. So you don't always have to do it right away. Uh, you can work with the pivot of minus three. There is nothing wrong with that. But it's a convenient thing to do, so you can choose to do it later, or you can do it now. Eventually you want all of your pivots to be ones, you'll see why. So in this case, let's do it now. And the way it can be achieved is by dividing the second row by negative three, yielding one, two, and one here. So it becomes quite nice and simple. One, two, and one right here. Okay, still zero here and one is still our pivot. So now let's use the one to eliminate the minus six below it. So what's the row operation that will accomplish that for us? It's adding six of this row to the third row. Adding six of the second row to the third row. And let's see what happens. The six is of course eliminated by design and minus 12 plus six times two, well that's also gone. And minus six of one plus one times six, that's also gone. So the entire third row is eliminated. We have nothing but zeros there. And that always happens in square matrices with linearly dependent columns. We'll discuss a little bit later why that happens, that you always get a row of all zeros. So we're basically left with just two equations, if you think back to the interpretation in terms of system of equations. Okay, is it now obvious that the middle column is the average of the other two? Maybe it's a little bit clearer. If this was the original system you were presented with, I think it would be a little easier to determine that this column times two is the sum of the first and the third, but maybe not quite so easy yet. So let's proceed with Gauss elimination. There's one other step that we can take because we have this pivot, everything below it is eliminated. Now let's eliminate everything above it. And that is accomplished by the following row operation. 
subtracting twice of row two from row one. And I just want to take a moment right now to point out that I don't say multiply the second row by two and subtract it from the first row because that makes it sound like you're actually changing the second row. But you're not changing the second row. You're only using the second row to change the first row. So the proper English to use in this case is adding a multiple or subtracting of the second row from the first. So we're going to subtract twice the second row from the first. And the result is zero here, minus one here, and subtracting twice this number from three, one here. So zero minus one, one. Zero, in other words, nothing. Minus one, one. And now we're done with Gaussian elimination. There's nothing else we can do because Gaussian elimination is always affected with the help of the pivots. And we have run out of the pivots because the first pivot came from this row, the second pivot came from the second row, and there is no other non-zero pivot that we could possibly use. And it would not be a smart idea to, for instance, start using this minus one to eliminate this two. Because as you do it with the row operations, this one will undo this zero, which is not something that you want to do. So when you've run out of pivots, you're actually done. So Gauss elimination is all about identifying pivots and using them to eliminate all the entries below them and then all the entries above them. So it takes just a little bit of practice, but you will soon recognize that we're done with Gauss elimination. Right now, there is nothing else that's left to do. But this is not a very bad spot to end because now, if you think about it, we have perfect columns for identifying relationships. We have this column. Let's write in zeros just to make them pop. So this column is one, zero, zero. And this column is zero, one, zero. And if you recall from our previous discussions about decomposition, these are dream columns with which to decompose. Everything is very easy to decompose with respect to these two columns, just because they have one, 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 and the rest of the entries are zeros. So now there is no denying that the third column is clearly minus one of the first plus twice the second. So let's write it down. I'll call it C3. C3 is clearly minus one C1 plus two C2, right? You see it from these two entries. The third column, C3, is clearly, let's just put in zero, so all columns have the same look and feel. So this column, because of this minus one, is clearly minus one of this column and plus two of this column. So that's what I have written here. C3 equals minus C1 plus two C2. Or in other words, C1 plus C3 equals two C2. Now it's something that we magically knew to begin with. But in this video, we're pretending that we didn't see it. Well, we could only pretend this so, for so long, only for so long, because now there is no denying that this relationship is obvious because Gauss in elimination put in so many zeros that it gave us these beautiful columns with respect to which, which to decompose. So this relationship can also be rewritten as minus C1 plus 2C2 plus C3, excuse me, minus C3 equals zero, which tells us that the vector in the null space is minus one, two, minus one. Well, that's right here. This, the realization of this relationship gives us the null space. So that's the null space. And there's also no denying that it's very easy to see that the right-hand side is the first column plus second because of these two ones. That the third column is first plus second producing this particular solution. So whereas the particular, so, whereas the general solution 
may not have been obvious to begin with after a few steps of Gaussian elimination, in this case after all of the steps of Gaussian elimination, the particular solution, which comes from the relationship of the right-hand side to the columns of the matrix, as well as the null space, which comes from the relationships among the columns, became completely obvious. And that's the entire idea behind Gaussian elimination. So this completes this example. So let's do a whole lot more.